Welcome back to the channel guys, let's delve into our usual flurry of iPhone 15 reports and in case you're already bored of the iPhone 15, do not fret because we also have news regarding iPhone 16. Yes, we have news about next year's unreleased iPhones in August. The leak world really is something. But let's first get this year's iPhones out of the way. So in the off chance you still don't believe iPhone 15 is a thing, even though Apple's consistently been releasing new iPhones every September, I have news for you because we now have actual evidence it is indeed releasing soon because a model number has been found in India's regulatory database and we can expect this to be one of the new iPhone 15 models. The model number in question is A3094 and that's just a bunch of letters and numbers without some actual context. So for those curious, one of the model numbers for the iPhone 14 models was A2649. So yes, it doesn't take a genius to work out that the higher number equals a new iPhone. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. Now you may be wondering why has it been found in India's database of all places? Well that's a good question because it's a perfect segue to our next report regarding production in India beginning for the 15 series as we speak. Now you may be wondering why is this big news? Apple producing iPhones before launch, that just makes sense, right? Well, no, this actually is massive news, guys, because for the longest time, China has been the home of iPhone production, but of course, with last year's shutdowns and Apple missing out on some of that juicy holiday revenue, Timothy's on a mission to make sure that never happens again. And so, yes, diversifying the supply chain and relying on other countries to produce iPhones does make sense. In the past, there was a humongous six month gap between China and India production, but now it's been shortened to just a few weeks. And so, yeah, this is fantastic news for Apple since they'll have a large supply of iPhone 15 models ready to go so that consumers can buy them on day one. And it seems the model number that has leaked is the one being mass produced, hence why it leaked. Apple's plan right now is to eventually produce 25% of all iPhones in India by 2025 and other products could follow suit. In fact, Digitimes has told us AirPods is gonna join the Indian gang by the end of 2024. So yeah guys, on the whole, this is great news. Moving on to charging speeds for those who want to absolutely obliterate their battery health, I have fantastic news for you because iPhone 15 is gonna support higher charging speeds according to 9to5Mac. Right now, the 14 series maxes out at 27 watts, but with USB-C, we could see the iPhone 15 go all the way to 35 watts, which is actually still pretty poor compared to Android phones with 200 watt charging. But you know what, guys? If there's one thing I despise, it's insane charging speeds. Yes, your phone can charge from zero to 110 minutes, but that battery's gonna be dead in six months because of the insane degradation. And yes, I know they have fancy tech to prevent this, but here's the facts, guys. Faster charging increases the degradation of the battery. That's simple facts. They might slow this down with the fancy technology they use, but this is still gonna end up being the case with these insane charging speeds. So I would much rather have a phone that, of course, gets me through the day without no issues and have slow charging instead, especially when I charge my phone overnight. So in a way, I'm glad Apple's not going ludicrous with their charging speeds, but I also couldn't care less about this upgrade, especially when it costs an arm and a leg to replace the battery in new iPhones. Although in usual Apple fashion, if you want these high speeds, you have to make sure Apple actually approves the wire you decide to use because like with Lightning, only MFI products can access the faster charging speeds. Now moving on to cases for iPhone 15, I have heartbreaking news because the beloved leather cases could be dead and I don't care. Let's be honest guys, Apple's first party cases are a tad overrated and I had a silicon case for a while and it felt like it was wearing away every second I used it. And so there's no way I'm spending $60 on a leather case just for that to disintegrate. You may be wondering though, why is Apple suddenly getting rid of these? 
Well, it seems Apple is feeling bad for the poor cows that were killed in the process of making these. And also it is bad for the environment. And we know how Apple loves to be green. So yeah, seemingly Apple's done with these cases. And this has been backed up by credible sources like Shrimp Boy, 9to5Mac, and One Re. There is a chance though that depending on how many Apple sheep beg for these cases to come back, they do release vegan versions instead. But still guys, I don't think Apple cases are worth it. You could probably find cheaper leather cases that are just as good. Now at last, let's talk iPhone 16. Now to be fair, I know some are gonna be surprised we're already getting leaks, but this actually is not unusual. We knew iPhone 15 would have USB-C this time last year. And that's because guys, Apple's working on these phones well ahead of time. And who knows, maybe there are early prototypes of iPhone 19 somewhere in Apple's HQ that of course, probably is gonna leak pretty soon. Anyways, coming back to iPhone 16, we have a pretty confusing report from Mr. Minchi Kuo. He tells us next year's Pro models are gonna use this new stacked camera design that Apple's adopting this year with the 15 and 15 plus. Now a stacked CMOS image sensor captures more light and because of production issues, they couldn't bring this to all of the iPhone 15 models. But if that's the case, why the heck did Apple choose to bring this to the regular models first? Does that mean the cheaper phones have better cameras? Because clearly that makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I'm not sure what to make of this. And because it's Quo, you can't ask him to clarify because he's never spoken to the media or press. He just randomly pops out of nowhere, reveals his tidbits and then dips. So yes, we just have to try and make some sense out of this. But in this case, I'm just plain confused. Moving on to not so confusing rumors, Jeff Poo tells us Wi-Fi 7 and a 48 megapixel ultra wide could be some of the main features of next year's Pro models. And my response to that information is meh? Wi-Fi 7 is cool, I guess, but most don't even have Wi-Fi 6C routers, let alone Wi-Fi 7 routers. So this very much is something that might be handy in the future, but not something we need right now. As for the ultra-wide upgrades, if this gets rid of the softness the sensors had for years, I will be happy, but that isn't confirmed. So till then guys, I'll have to reserve judgment. Finally, we have news that micro LED panels could be making its way to the iPhone and other Apple products a lot sooner than expected. We've already heard about the Apple Watch getting this somewhat soon. We initially heard about a 2024 release, but then as per usual in the world of leaks, that date slipped to 2025 and now 2026. But yes, eventually once the Apple Watch gets this, we should see the iPhone follow suit. That's what happened with OLED. Apple first began with the mini school display on the Apple Watch that's much easier to build and then made its way to the massive displays on the iPhone. The wait should hopefully be worth it though because micro LED is gonna be an upgrade in every single aspect compared to OLEDs. It should give us high brightness, lower power consumption, which does improve the endurance of the device. There's less risk of burning, which is important because iPhones now have always on displays and also we get better contrast ratios and faster response times because of something called pixel level individual lights. I'm not gonna pretend like I know what that means, but there's that plus colors should be better. So I'm looking forward to this guys. It's just that it's gonna take quite a while for the iPhone to get this. I'm assuming OLED's gonna stick around for the next four to five years. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.